All right, I think we're good to go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another epi episode of the podcast. My name is Liam Hydrisny Camille, and I am very excited to share with you our guest today is none other than Bound. Um, if you guys haven't heard of Bound already, he's, a, he's an up and coming streamer, pro player. When I say up and coming, I mean he's already there. You know, this guy has just been on everybody's radar for over a year now. He's playing at such a high level. He's playing with the best players in the game. He's super talented. He's, his, his movement, the way that he shoots, everything that he does in game is absolutely insane. Uh, he streams it all over Twitch TV as well. And I want you guys to be able to get a little bit of a background on his history and what's going on. So we're going to spend some time today getting to know Bound. Uh, Bound, did I miss anything there? Is there anything you want to add? Uh, no, that was, that was perfect. <laughs> Awesome, man. So where we usually start is kind of like right at the beginning. So um, have you have you always been a gamer? Uh, Yeah, I'd say I've always been a, a gamer. Yeah, I think I started when I was about four or five. I would just, I was like everyone else, you know, I'd play Halo 2, the Halo 2, Halo 3 with, you know, their brother just or sister just sitting there just playing fun customs or whatever. And yeah, I mean, I would just... I would just sit there just dominating them. I can't even lie. So, yeah, I'd say I've always been a gamer. And you've been pretty good then, Rob Sands, at the start. Yeah, I, I would just sit there and just destroy my uncle and stuff. And just without, without even like trying. Yeah, that's crazy. I know like some people, when they pick up a controller for the first time, me, for example, I couldn't use both thumbs at the same time. So. Yeah, no, that's like my parents. They have to like literally look at the controller when they're using it and yeah. see what buttons they're hitting. Yeah. <laughs> so did you did you start with Halo or were you like a Nintendo kid earlier on? Um, so believe it or not, I actually started with Counter-Strike. So when I was about, I think I was four, if I was in kindergarten, I remember I would just come home and we had this... We had like a computer room. I don't know if that's like like old or anything like that, but yeah, we literally had a room for the computer, and I would just go in there and play uh, Counter Strike Source and just the OG Counter Strike and uh, Team Fortress One. Yeah. I would just sit there and play those games, and I loved them so much. Yeah. So and so, you, you actually started a PC game. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's from my earliest memory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, were you good at Counter Strike as well? Um. I don't know if I was good. I don't think I was like terrible, but I would just literally sit there and just, because my parents never wanted me to play online. So I would just sit there and shoot bots. Oh, fair enough. And, uh, and counter strike, yeah. Yeah. So, so how, I, would, I would destroy the bots. I can't lie, I would destroy them. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> how, how old were you when you were playing counter strike? How, what's that? Uh, I would say I was about four, five or six, somewhere around that time. It was yeah. definitely before Halo 3, I, I remember. It was, uh, yeah, I was definitely four or five or six. Yeah, yeah. And then you started playing Halo when you were how old? Um, well, I started playing it a lot with my brother when Halo Reach came out. But I would play like on his Xbox or like take his Xbox and play Halo 3. And sometimes Halo 2 from like my earliest, earliest memory. Yeah. And that's awesome. And so what was your like the first Halo that you started playing more multiplayer? Like where your parents started letting you uh, play? Definitely Halo Reach. Yeah, Halo Reach for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What well, do you think that we were we kind of um, underappreciated Reach as a game? Like in hindsight? Um I used to think that until we went back and played Halo Reach like a year ago, you know, when the or two years ago, whenever it was, the land event was. Mm -hmm. I was I loved Halo Reach, right? I thought like, wow, why does everyone hate this game? Like this game's awesome. But you know, at the time I wasn't like a competitive player. I would just like play infection or just like all that stuff. So I would just sit there and play it and then yeah, we went back to Halo Reach, and I was like, wow, this game is actually not that good. Because, you know, the competitive maps and stuff, like, the maps were just... Compared to, like, Halo 3 and stuff, like, we're playing Forge maps, all that stuff, and, you know, the Bloom and Sprint and stuff. So, yeah, I definitely... Before we went back to it, I thought Halo Reach was the best game, and then, yeah, we went back to it, I was like, yeah, this game is not that good competitively, so... Yeah. But yeah. Casually, it's one of the best, in my opinion. I think, I think so as well, because that's... I came in at Halo 3 loved halo 3 still still my favorite halo mm. uh, and but i think that's a mixture of the competitive nature of the ranked system in halo 3 that made me want to like keep playing and i loved playing against you know 50 high slayer and 50 high mlg and that type of thing that kind of um had that buzz like i'm beating other good players or i'm getting yeah. smart, i need to get better and then in halo reach i don't even remember how the ranking system worked in halo reach right? i don't even think i had one yeah they had like they had like the arenas like thing, but that was about it. 
yeah, it was uh, that was just such a weird thing. I think that's what why there was like a bit of a downfall of, of Halo. That's where it kind of started decreasing yeah. a little bit because it was just like every, no one had purpose when they were playing. It was kind of like oh, I'm just unlocking my armor and you know <laughs> like trying, yeah. trying to get some credits and do the commendations. And then lots of people lost interest in it very quickly. But I mean, that was fun too. I loved just grinding out for the armor, like the that, the Halo Reach ranks, like the Nova and all that stuff. That stuff was so cool. Yeah, I loved it. I actually really hope that they have a big part of that in Halo Infinite. I think. Oh yeah, no, that'd be awesome. Yeah, because I got to, what is it, Inheritor? Is that the max? Yeah, one? yeah, Inheritor, yeah. The shooting star, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got that, but like a few years after Reach was like done, and it was Halo Core. Um, yeah, no, I got mine in like 2014 too, because, yeah. yeah. But I just remember being so proud, and like that's one of the reasons why I decided I want to get 152 in Halo 5, is because looking back, I don't. I don't even remember being that much of a grind, but I know during it, I was like, I just don't want to play Reach anymore. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, I'm the same way with Halo Five. Like, I thought about grinding four and fifty-two, but I was like, uh, I can't go into Halo Five like that still. So. Yeah, yeah. I just had this. I don't know. I looked at it and tried to look at it mathematically and go, okay, if I just did a million XP a day for twenty days, I'm there. That doesn't sound hard. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But Wait, um, for Halo Reach or Halo Five? For Halo Five. Oh, that's yeah. That's no, good. I can't. I can't. I still can't. I can't compromise for it. Yeah, no, fair enough, man. I don't know either. But I also have in my head that if I get to 152, I'll never play it again. And oh then, yeah, no. If I got to 152, you'd never see me on the gaming rant again. <laughs> I don't know how people get 152 and they're grinding for like 153 or something. Like, dude, you're done. Like, we're gonna. <laughs> Go play MCC. It's fun. <laughs> oh yeah, no, MCC is amazing on the computer. It's it's awesome. But I, I wish Halo Five was on the. I mean, it is, but like I wish an actual Halo Five was on the computer. Yeah, well, that's. I'm so interested to see how they do that in Halo Infinite because in Infinite, they, they it's going to be like released on PC. Yeah, no, I feel like yeah, Halo Infinite on PC will definitely be the best Halo experience yet, in my yeah, opinion. I hope so as well. And I've been listening to. Did you see they just re they just did a another Ask 343 uh, with the game audio. Mm -hmm. um, that made me like super excited. If you haven't seen it, they're talking about- Oh, the audio. Oh yeah, no, I saw it, but I was like, eh, I don't, I don't know too much about like, I don't, I don't know how much I care about the audio. So well, I, th I think I like skim skimmed over it. Yeah, yeah. I think that the big thing that I took out of it anyway was the, um, the level of detail that they're putting into sound affecting competitive play essentially. So like, your teammates' fire won't be as loud as enemy fire. So, Wait, what? Yeah, so like, if an enemy's shooting at you, if you can hear someone shooting and they're not hitting you, then you know it's an enemy firing, right? But if it's slightly muffled, it's a teammate shooting, so you don't have, you're not as concerned about it. Um, Wait, I didn't even, I didn't even know that, okay. Yeah, so they, they did some really cool stuff. Same with like, if you're in a different room to someone, you'll hear the bullets as if it's in the next room, not that it's, in not yeah, okay. map randomly. And uh, the other one that was really cool takeaway was the footsteps. So you nice. have your footsteps, which have a, an audio, your teammates have a different audio, and enemies have a different audio as well. So playing the game, hopefully we'll be able to pick up slowly. Okay, that's teammates' footsteps. You know, because some, I don't know, you're, you're very good at the game, so probably never have, ever happens to you. But there's sometimes where I hear a footstep and I spin around into my teammate that's falling behind me, right? Mm -hmm. in, in Infinite, that should happen less because you, it's a it's a different sound of your teammate's footsteps compared to the enemy one. So I'm excited for all the stuff. Like it's gonna it's gonna be on PC, so it's gonna look great. I think that from what they're saying about the sound, if it's executed really well, it's gonna sound really good. Yeah, no, because sound is definitely. I'm, I, I remember when uh, MTC first dropped, like the sound was muffled. I think it still might be, but. Like the sound was so weird on Reach and stuff, and they, like they even acknowledged it too. Yeah, I had no idea like about this infinite stuff. Oh, I've read. I, mean, I didn't really read the article. I just like looked over. I like looked at the pictures in the video. Yeah, I didn't actually like read it. Read it. Like I had no idea that like there's they're gonna different differentiate like your teammates and the enemies. That sounds Isn't actually that cool. Pretty, so I, think that, yeah. I think that that's a really cool idea, and I think it just adds another like skill gap, which is I think a big thing that Halo Five didn't have enough of is like. They took the aim. It's so easy to aim in Halo Five. Um, debatable, but, debatable. Well, oh, I don't know. I think with the I heavy think, aim, with the heavy aim, it's hard. But if there was no heavy aim, yeah, it would be pretty easy. Yeah. I, what I mean is, like, if I jump into Halo Three right now today, I haven't played Halo Three for six months. I could get my shot back in like a few games, right? Mm -hmm. In Halo Five, if I haven't played for six months, man, I I feel like I've got to like grind in. Oh yeah, no. Halo Five is literally it's the hardest game to play if you don't play it. Yeah. And that, but that's what I mean is that's what I meant by like it's it's easy to aim in Halo Five for 
um, for like a casual player, compa- like as in compared to Halo 3, if you play Halo 3 casually, you're gonna be like, holy shit, it's so hard to shoot the sniper, it's so hard to shoot. But if you know how it works, it's really easy to do. Yeah. Halo 5, it's really easy to do, but hard to get good at. So like, you know, you can I can get outshot by someone who's running at me with an assault rifle because the, the fucking bullet magnetism and everything's just dragging their aim, you know, a little bit yeah. harder than what it does in Halo 3. Anyway, that's that's much of a muchness. Uh, if we talk about, so you started playing more Reach Online, was that that was like you said that was just casual it wasn't really competitive did you play halo 3 ranked at all as well or were you not playing that online um i would play it like i would like play swat and stuff but no it was definitely more casual i i don't even think i knew about mlg until like 2011 or 12. yeah i would just i think i found out through ninja maybe i don't know i don't remember how i found out about mlg but i would just sit on youtube on my Xbox, or I don't, it was in my Xbox, yeah, I think it was my Xbox. I think I just like ran ac- like across a Ninja formal montage. I don't, I don't remember. I think that's how I first found out about MLG. Yeah. Then from there, I just started watching like the order events, like Halo 2. And I, I remember I loved like how uh, Gandhi was in Halo 2. Cause I would rewatch the events. I was like, wow, that guy, I remember he was like insane with the sniper and he was like, we would just scream at people and I love that. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's a high form of the game when, when somebody throws a little bit of energy in like that. Um, yeah. So, okay, so that's what, how old were you when you started fighting and watching those montages? Uh, I think I was, I was probably a 10 or 11, 10 so, or 11 or 12. So like right. 11 or 12, 10, like 10 to 12 is where you started thinking, hey, this competitive side of things is really cool as well. No, I didn't start thinking that until probably I was like 14. Okay. Because at the time I would watch it and I'd appreciate it, but like, wow, those guys are really good. And then mm. I'd just go like play Infection or something. <laughs> yeah, fair so enough. Back, at, at, at that age, around there, I, me and my friend from school, we would literally just, we try to make Infection montages, like Killing Airs and stuff like that. It was yeah. so lame, but looking back at it, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Have you heard of the guys, um, uh, Infection Hub? Uh, no, I've never heard of them. I'll, I'll link you after this. Uh, there's some some young kids. They started doing it about I think six years ago, and they're mm. they're like so when they they must have been like yeah 14 or something uh, or 12 when they started doing it, and um, they've gr- grown a really good strong community around um, the infection site game mode in Halo 5 and in MCC. Like that, I'm talking you know over a thousand subs on YouTube. They maintain anywhere between like a hundred to sorry 50 to 100 people when they're streaming live. They run these competitions every single They just grind infection? Yeah, they just just grind infection. That's what their whole thing is. They put out montages. They have competitive lobbies. It's, um, I actually think it's, I think so dope. When I first looked at it, I was like, man, this is a bit cringy. Uh, Yeah, no. (laughs) I I told the boys that as well. And they're like, yeah, but you should just give it a chance and watch it. And then I started watching it and I was like, these guys are like, they're passionate about the game in a way that a lot of people aren't. And it gave me a lot of hope to thinking, hey, if we've got more small communities like this doing um, similar things in Halo Infinite, I think that's I think that's going to be a really good thing for the community. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, just every aspect of the community just had grown, yeah. Yeah, because I think, you know, if you've got someone, like, say, you know, you started playing Infection, right? What, mm. what, what and, and SWAT and those type of things, what brought you over to wanting to get more competitive at the game? Um, I think it had to do with the fact that, like, like I would just... Like when I would play like Halo, like vanilla Halo Reach, right? Like I would just, I would just get tired of getting like armor locked on. <laughs> I would literally just play MLG, like a 1v1 or something. I'd be like, okay, this is cool. Like my gun doesn't bloom. There's no armor lock or newbie stuff. Like I just, I just like that aspect of the game. But I just didn't have to, there was no like stupid counters for stuff. Like it was just hit your shots and kill them and you win. That's all it was. I just like, I just love that. Like it was just so simple. Yeah, so it brought it back more to that individual player skill. Yeah, gimmick. more than just like getting energy sorted or people having armor lock and invade and stuff. I, I just loved how simple it was. Yeah, I was I was the energy sword kid in Reach. That was 100% me. I, mean, I think it was my like second highest tool destruction on like the... <laughs> and you, wait, you did? You played Infection or no? No, no, I played uh, I played multi-team. I think I oh, multi-team. played multi-team yeah. and, team. <laughs> and I, was, I was trying to be... I kid. remember back then people would just... Uh, multi-team, they go for like assassinations and stuff. Like it'd be people doing like the craziest assassinations and stuff like that. Yeah, like ninjaing and that type of thing. Yeah, 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 ninja. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I definitely. That was that was me back then. 
but I like I like that. So you started realizing that, like, even from that young age, you were kind of uh, bashing up your uncle and your family playing Halo Two and Halo One, and then it, you got into Reach. You're playing Infection and SWAT and everything, and you went, "Hang on, I want to," you know. I, and then you're like, "I don't like any of this energy sword and arm lock. I want something that's yeah. a little bit more skillful." So you started then getting into the MLG side of things. You're like, "This is great. It's like you hit your shots and you win." Yeah. And then uh, did you play? Did you do any competitive like online stuff like game battles or anything like that in Halo Reach or when did that come? Uh that started in Halo 5. Halo Reach uh I started I started playing Reach competitively in like 2013, 2014. Yeah. I I was like, like I I played Reach in 2012. I think that's when I first cuz I played in 2010, but I was a Call of Duty kid at the time. Like all my friends at school played Call of Duty and stuff, so they weren't really big into Halo Reach. I mean, we would play fun customs, but we weren't like, that wasn't like our main game we played. Yeah. I didn't start playing until like 2012. And then, uh, yeah, I think 2014 hit. And I just, I was just getting excited for Halo 5. Like, I was like, wow, Halo 5 looks super cool. Because I remember I played the beta with Neptune and stuff. I was like, oh, this, this seems so fun. Like, just, just playing competitively. Because me and Neptune would just play against each other all the time. So, yeah, I think it definitely started. Halo 5 like the competitiveness yeah especially yeah. game battles because Halo 5 came out and I just I grind at game battles yeah okay so because that's super interesting I, I want to find the point though like at what point did you start playing with players like Neptunes and, and the guys that are kind of like at that level um well I actually was friends with Neptunes before he was like super good at the game like oh. me, and him, me, me and him were like yeah me and him were like really good friends before Halo 5 even came out like he was like 12 and I was yeah. like 14 or 15 so yeah I, we pretty much like went into halo 5 together like pretty but we were pretty bad at the game i can't lie like we were we weren't like any anything crazy at the game i mean yeah. i'm pretty sure everyone was but yeah no we we weren't like some crazy beasts like we kind of are now yeah okay dude that's just it's so crazy how two people can be like friends online but then both end up at in the top one percent of players for something yeah you know what I mean? I mean, we, we were so similar in like competitive aspects. Like we both just wanted to pretty much just like kill each other. Like we would, there were sometimes we would just get so mad at each other when losing to each other. We'd be like, dude, you, you're terrible. Or we would just start cussing each other out and just block each other. And then we'd be <laughs> friends again in like a week. Yeah. Well, that's that's when you know you've got a good friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he's definitely my best friend from gaming, 100%. Yeah. yeah. That, dude, that's so funny. There's so many moments like that. My brother and I are like that. Jake will rage so hard. And I'll just leave the party and just won't won't rejoin. Yeah, no, that's literally. You know, he's pretty much my brother at this point. Yeah. We, we we literally don't care what we say to each other. We'll be as disrespectful, and then the next day be best friends again. Yeah, awesome. Oh, well, hey, that that sounds like a that's a good friendship to have made. I love hearing that type of stuff coming from gaming. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then um, you're starting to get into it, at Halo Five. So Halo mm -hmm. Five, what, like five six years ago at this point. Yeah. Um, how, how old are you then when Halo Five comes out? I was, yeah, I was 15. I was 15 about to turn 16. It was, tw yeah, 2015. Yeah, I was 15. Uh, I honestly didn't even know what, like, why I played the game. Like, I would just come home after school and just grind the game. But I didn't like, like, I hated the game when it first came out because the ARs, the storm rifles, like, I literally hated the game more than anything. Yeah. But, like, I, for some reason, I just kept playing it. I don't know why. Like, I, I should have just moved on but i didn't i love the game for some reason and i every day i play it i just rage because i'm getting crouched on smg radar uh pulse grenade whatever it's called yeah and i just i just grinded i don't know why i would just i would sit there and grind the gb 1v1s that's how i first got into gb was 1v1s i would play with um i wouldn't play with anyone i think i met people i, I would play against trippy uh renegade just like some other GB players, I'm not too sure if anyone's familiar with them, but they were good. Like they were like, like when I first started playing with them, like it kind of humbled me in the sense because I was like, wow, I'm not like anything compared to these guys. Yeah, fair enough. And then, do you think is that how they got to know you as well? Like, did you guys start playing online after versing each other? Um, no, nah, I never would play with them. I started playing two v, started playing two v twos with Neptune. I had this other friend. He, he doesn't even play anymore. But no, we would play two v twos, and we'd play against them, and they would just destroy us. Like I, they had, they had no reason to play with me. Like I was not good at the game. Yeah, yeah. They were, well, they were like light years ahead of me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, at what point in Halo 5's lifespan did you start 
improving and getting to the point where you know you were getting noticed or you were starting to feel pretty confident in the game um i would definitely say after they took out AR and radar or not after the radar but like they nerfed the radar after they took out the autos all that stuff i started like seriously grinding the game yeah because at that point i actually liked the game i was like okay this is this is doable like this is actually fun like just sitting here not getting any AR. i don't need to crouch 24 7. Yeah. at that point i would just grind matchmaking i mean nothing's we just get on grind matchmaking every day and we just we just we just love playing against people just yeah. you know playing against the big pros like ninja like ninja at the time still grinded i remember i would actually like stream side ninja and like try to play against him because i thought it was like, the coolest thing ever yeah at the time it was kind of messed up but yeah yeah no we would just sit there grind and then after that uh i think i got my friend king nick he hit me up to play in a uh an am tournament with like some pretty known players i think it was it was Minos and Chaser. I'm not sure if you remember Chaser. He was on Optic for some time at the beginning of H5. Yeah. I think it was my first tournament I played with like actual good players. Yeah. And we would just, we actually played pretty good. And right then and there, I was like, okay. Because I would play like, I would play against people in matchmaking who were like considered good AMs. I was yeah. like, okay, these people are good. And then I played them in the tournament. I'm just like destroying them. I'm like, okay, like I'm actually pretty good at this. Like the first tournament I played, we, we were like destroying people. Yeah, was that? Who I thought we were really good at the game. Was that tournament online one? Or was that a land? Yeah, it was the. It was online. It was the uh, online. It was last chance qualifier. I think Splice won it to go to uh, Worlds. They won it, and yeah, we actually played against them and almost went took them to a game five. I don't know if they were trying or not, but like I, I felt like we were destroying them. Yeah, that's <laughs> what a memory. It sounds yeah. like. It kind of, it sounds like it kind of skips a, a little bit, you know, like. No, just, no, I just, I hopped right into the pit. Like it was straight. Okay. I'm playing this AM tournament with pretty good. I don't know why they played with me. I guess Kinnick put a good warden for me. Yeah. But yeah, well, no, we went straight. I went straight into it. Like there was no hesitation. I'm just playing against the best. I'm like, oh, okay. There yeah. was no, yeah, there was, I mean, I would play in some tournaments here and there with Neptune. Yeah. Like some small tournaments, but it wasn't nothing, like serious. Yeah. So when so this is I think a really good thing for the young guys that we've got to listen to the podcast. When you're talking about like grinding matchmaking and like grinding to improve, um, did you have stuff that you were focusing on? Like did you did you consciously stop and go, okay, I need to be thinking about like my movement, I need to be thinking about, you know, my aim and where the spawns are and or like we just play. Um I honestly I don't even remember. I feel like I just I feel like I was just playing just because I love the game, like the passion of the game. I feel like I don't even remember like everything. And, oh, I need to think about this spawn. I feel like I would definitely try to be as fast as I possibly could be because I feel like Halo 5 is just a fast game, right? Like the faster you are, the more pressure you put on people, just like the harder they crumble, right? So I do remember back then I would just try to be as annoying and as fast as possible and just fly people. It definitely was like my motive at the time. Yeah. I feel like it still is. Like I just love soaring at people. <laughs> I was just about to say it's it it shows in your gameplay that that was yeah. something you were, you were focusing on. And yeah, it's that's really, yeah. Sorry, you that's definitely my favorite part about Halo Five is the fact that you can just straight up throw a side in someone's face and just destroy them. That's definitely my favorite part. For sure. I I, I feel like some advice to like younger players players out there is that when you're grinding the game, just like just have fun with it. Like I don't know. So many people try to play like other people. Like you just gotta find your own playstyle and just like driving it yeah yeah definitely well i think yeah that that um playing fast and being accurate is so important for halo 5 and like yeah. w- when you watch you play i think one of the main reasons why you're so amazing to watch like it's so enjoyable to watch your play style is that the way you're playing is so fast but it's so you're doing a lot of jumps and movement and things that most players just can't do first of all but you're hitting it with like this 100%, you know, 95% accuracy of being able to just do this this movement around the map. Mm-hmm. And it's so fast. It puts you in a position where even the other player, the other players that are good get caught off guard. They're like, holy shit, how, did, how, how was he here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's literally what I strive to like play as, like be that player to just be like, wait, what? Like this guy's just soaring at us and destroying us. Like that's literally what I strive to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good. I think you're achieving that. <laughs> Um, okay, so run me through the team that you're on now in Halo 5. Mm-hmm. That you're playing with... Me, Boo Boo, Fallon's uh, Sam. Yeah, awesome. And so it's called Inconceivable, is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And how did that come about? Did you, were you like starting that? Or did one of those guys approach you or did um, you? So I'm teaming currently with Boo Boo and Fowl for Halo Infinite. So we're pretty much a team of three still. And we, we, we got the word that like Halo 5 was coming back that, you know, that we probably should pick up someone that's pretty good to like fill in. So we, we got the news and I was like, uh, oh, Saiyan, like, you know, Saiyan's one of the best Halo 5 players everyone knows Saiyan. I was like, does Saiyan have a team? Because, you know, he's a, he has a Halo Infinite team also. I was like, I don't think his team's going to play like APG and Pistola because, you know, they're not they're not big into Halo 5 like that or not anymore. So I was like, okay, Tommy probably could be available. Trippy, because at the time, before the team I was on now, I, I would play with Trippy and H2A because that was supposed to be our team for Infinite on uh, H2A, but that obviously didn't last long. Hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I would play with them. Uh, I was it was either uh, Saiyan or Trippy, and then I was like, I guess I'll just hit up Saiyan because I would, uh, before the tourneys came back, we used to play these esports arena tournaments. They're, they're still going on now. Yeah. But before the Halo Five Pro Series, it was like the only tournaments, and we would play with Saiyan. It'd be like me, Saiyan, and then like two others. Like we'd rotate out just two other people. We actually would win a, like a couple. I think we won like three or four. I don't know how many we won. There's a couple crazy ones where I remember I like I ninja like soul snipe and stuff. I don't know if anyone remembers that, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, now we would just play. I was like, all right, me, me and Tommy were pretty good together. Like we were actually like, like we I don't know we just worked together and it was just fun. So I think I think ever since then I was like, all right, we we'll go with Tommy. Yeah, Tommy's Tommy. Like insane Halo Five. Yeah, well, I want to if you can give me some insight into those guys because I know them all just from watching them play, right? Mm -hmm. it, out of all the top guys that you play with, who's like the, who's, you know, who kind of fits what personality? Is there, who's the funniest player that you, you play with? Uh, funniest player? I don't even know if it's a player I play with. It's probably our coach Tusk. It's, yeah. Tusk, Tusk makes me laugh. Like that guy's so funny. He's just, his mannerisms and stuff he says is just hilarious to me. He would just say like some sarcastic shit. Just randomly, it's just funny as hell. Or probably Falcated too. Falcated is, Okay, is one of those people who like doesn't try to ever be funny, but he's just funny. Like, uh, it doesn't even make sense. Like, he's just like, he's just a funny person. It's just funny. Yeah. He's just, he, he's just a funny guy. I don't know. He, he's funny. I love him. Yeah, yeah. I think some people just have it natural, especially when they put in like people that. No, he. No, I don't even think he wants to be funny. Like, he's just funny. Like, it's just funny. He's, he's a weird person. Okay, he's just a weird guy, but he's funny. Yeah, for sure. And what about uh, who do you reckon is the smartest player that you play with? Uh, smartest player in Halo 5 or like on my team? No, just in Halo 5 in general. Someone that you, whenever you're like playing with them or talking to them, you're like, dude, this guy is smart. Mm, that's a tough one. I'd probably have to go Frosty or Eco, one of those two. They're just, there's definitely to like, or Boobadoo. Boobadoo Boob Boob was up there too. Because they're just like, they play the, I mean, not, not Frosty and Eco so much, but like Boobadoo Boo plays like, he's not like super insanely fast, you know, so like, the way he perceives the game is just like another outlook that I can like learn from. Like he breaks the game down, like he'll break the game like, like say we lose a game or something and we'll just be like, oh, you shouldn't have done this and this and this and like, oh yeah, you're right. Like that's smart and I shouldn't have done that. Like he'll just give me like good input that like I don't even think about. Yeah. yeah. Like certain scenarios. Yeah. See, Booba Dooba is like, he's been around forever too, like 10 years. He's yeah. been around too. But Frosty and Nico, I'd say they're pretty smart. I, I never really play with them, so I never like get that type of input from them. Yeah. You know, they're just playing eights and stuff with them in the past. They're, you know, they're Frosty and Nico, like, they're yeah. one of the two best in the game, so. Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay, and so, um, who are, outside of the, like, best of the best guys that you play with, has, have you got any young guys that are on your radar that you think might uh, have a really big future coming into Infinite? Uh, this might surprise you, but I feel like it's definitely that Legend guy from Europe. Legend? Legend, Legend and Shady, yeah. Uh, Cause yeah. I don't even like, I don't even know where those guys came from. They just, they just like showed up one day. I was like, who the hell, like who the hell are these guys? Like, I remember back it was after Halo Five Vintage, right? It was like 2019, and I would just like sign up for these like these tournaments, these random two v two tournaments, right? Like it could be like a hundred bucks, one fifty bu bucks, like prize pool. And I'd always play these guys. I'm like, who even are these guys? Like I never even heard of these guys. They're actually like pretty good at the game. Yeah, yeah. So okay. yeah, definitely those two because. I'm pretty sure they dominated. They dominated Europe like these last couple of months. I, mean, I don't know how good they'll be in Infinite, but in Halo Five, they're definitely probably the two best Europeans I've seen. Yeah, awesome. I love. I love that the answer to that question was European players 
Like that just yeah. gives me so much hope for the future of, of Halo going into Infinite because I think I know a really big part, a part of the community is needing that that we need to strengthen is having European and you know Latam and the Oceanic region. Oh yeah, don't get, don't the Mexicans are really good too. There's a couple of young Mexicans players oh, too, but yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm not getting you wrong, but I just think that like the the fact that it was not someone from America or, or North America that um, was the answer to that question just makes me go, yeah, like that's so good because if we can get some of these teams placing and doing really well at like worlds and other competitions then the whole community benefits from it right because mm -hmm. you know, there's how many million people um that are going to be watching halo right mm -hmm. if you had uh, another million people from the oceanic region another million people from europe watching it and then somehow our audience for halo is consistently you know a few million people or it, the player base is you know is, is 500,000 to a million people for forever um, I think that happens when they have teams in their own country to look up to and players in their own country to look up to. So I think it's awesome that you've got Legend and Shady as uh, two guys that you think uh, have a big future coming into Infinite, you know? Mm, yeah. I think it's a good telltale sign um, that, you know, if they do everything right as far as competitions and getting people involved, we'll have, um, we'll have a, a really large uh, viewership base of <laughs> Infinite. Yeah, no, they're, they're good, so. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so um, the other question I was going to ask is like coming into Infinite, have you got like a checklist of things that you think are like absolutely necessary for the game to be successful? What do you think is like the, the most important thing that Infinite needs? Um, I don't know. There's so many things. Um, I, I mean, I want this just because, you know, I don't really like Battle Royales, but like I feel like Halo, like just the way Halo is, and, you know the, the way the game like plays and stuff yeah i feel like halo would be perfect for a battle royale and you know battle royale is like the biggest thing like the last five years so i feel like if halo had a battle royale it would definitely there's, i feel like there's no downside to it like how could there be a downside to a battle royale in halo yeah so i feel like if a if halo launched with a battle royale it definitely would just help the game out tremendously in any other any other aspects yeah for sure if i mean you if you look at cod too like I feel like COD, like, I feel like Warzone kind of helped COD out a lot, like, especially these last couple of years, because, or these last two or three, because the last two CODs, like Modern Warfare, I mean, Cold War is not bad, but Modern Warfare was terrible, in my yeah. opinion, like, competitively. Like, I remember me and Neptunes were excited to play it, and then we downloaded the game. The game didn't even have Dead Silence, like, in it. So yeah. we were like, okay, this game's kind of pretty bad. Like, I don't know how anyone likes this game. Yeah. But no, definitely with with Warzone like coming in for the game, it definitely saved it and just grew the game a lot. So I feel like if Halo like I know people for some reason like people think that as a bad part to Halo having a battle royale, but like imagine if Halo Five didn't have Warzone. Yeah. And it was just a battle royale, right? Like that would have probably helped the game tremendously. Oh, definitely. And and I think yeah, that's a really good point because you know so many of people in the Halo community that they, don't, they, that they don't want a battle royale. I think they're just like Halo elitists, you know, or Halo pure. I, mean, I can, I can kind of like see what, cause I don't really like battle royales either. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too big on like Fortnite. I mean, I played Fortnite when it first came out. It was like, eh, it got like, it got old to me like about a month. Yeah. Apex Legends, same way. It got pretty old to me. Yeah. In about I haven't a month. really, I don't, I don't really like um, battle royales either. I mean, yeah. I, it, I used to play Blackout with some mates a bit, um, but realistically, I Blackout think. Blackout was fun on yeah. Black Ops Four, yeah. Yeah, but I just I don't play any of them. Uh, I just find it I find it too too slow and too, and, and, and and yeah. Now nah, my biggest pet peeve in Battle Royale is definitely the looting. I hate just the looting and getting third party. That's it's so annoying to me. Yeah, I feel like it's more the fact that like whenever I play a Battle Royale, like it's always the same thing going into it, right? Like yeah. a game of games of any game of Halo can be different, but. For some reason when I play battle royals, it always seems like the same thing over and over. Yeah. I don't know. I, every battle royale I've played it, I just got it old in about a month. Yeah. Well I think I think that would be um I think it'd be the same with the with the if they do battle royales, how current battle royals are done, it'd be the same thing with Halo. Lots of people would just try it, think like okay, this feels a bit um, Yeah. Especially with the game being free, infinite being free, like no way people want to try it. Oh if it isn't. But the way that I see a battle royale being beneficial to the game, right, is that you have all these people that come in, they maybe try the battle royale, they get involved with the Halo series, they try the battle royale, they're like, okay, 
And, le- and I think that a good way for them to do the battle royale would be to be using elements of the law, you know, like you drop yeah. your ODST. Yeah, no, that's why it would be so perfect. Yeah. Well, 100%. And then people would be like, what is the law behind? Like, you know, people would start being interested. Like, oh, I just dropped Oh, yeah, it. true. I didn't you even know? think about that. Yeah. And then they start going, okay. And then maybe they play the campaign and then they go, oh, holy shit, there's a lot to this universe. And then maybe that makes them want to go and play MCC as well. And then they play MCC and they go, geez, and they come back to Halo Infinite. And they go, okay, I like the Warzone, uh, uh, you know, and, the, and that type of thing. Let me let me try um, compare like the the multiplayer side of things. And I just think that the battle royale is like a gateway to more- yeah, no, a hundred percent. Because like, say I was like twelve years old now, hmm. like I would love battle royales a hundred percent. Because I remember when I was like twelve years old or thirteen, I'd be like, bro, because you know, Hunger Games was big at that time. I'm like, yeah. dude, if Hunger Games was like a game, that'd be so cool. Like just a survival one life, you're in an arena or whatever, or a big open area yeah. like a battle royale yeah. like dude if that was a thing like if i was 12 years old and battle royales were a thing oh my god i'd love that yeah for sure so i think i think that's why what i like about the infection hub community as well is that we if we then had a battle royale community for halo that you're just going to have you know even if there's only say hundred thousand people in each community you mm. might get ten thousand of those people eventually at some point come into the um competitive side of things we had an extra 20,000 competitive players playing Halo Infinite. Ooh, you know, wouldn't that be amazing? You should you yeah. get, get it, out of 20,000 people, you're more than likely going to get at least another team of people that you're like, well, where did these guys come from? You know, and they're probably yeah. young kids, you know, at that age, 12 to 15, that have got a future ahead of them. And that's what like Halo needs. It needs this big boom. Like here's all this new, fresh energy. These young kids that are coming in and shaking up the game and the older players are, you know, smashing them but then helping them improve and it just that you know if the game gets more competitive more people will get interested in it more people will play it you know and i think it's a big role over mm-hmm. so i get pumped when i think about you know the amount of opportunity there is <laughs> but, yeah no when i think of infinite i get super excited too i just it's a new halo feeling like i don't know just uh, it's uh, it's it's weird because like it, it's just weird being excited for a new halo because it's been so long Oh, for sure. So just, think, just getting that feeling just feels awesome. Yeah. Well, one thing that I've been really trying to keep in my mind lately when I think about Infinite or, or think about when I'm playing Halo 5 is that Halo 5 still, aside from the heavy aim and the obvious things about it, it's still a pretty good game, right? Even Oh, then- yeah, no. Halo 5, like, Halo 5 is easily, like, the most fun game. Like, it's just, like, it never gets old to me. I don't know. Yeah. And but what I think about is if this game's at this point, like, if this game is this good still, then hopefully what they've managed to do in six years, we're going to get into Halo Infinite and we're going to be like, this is a game I can play for 10 years. You know, like, that's all I want from Halo Infinite. I want to pick it up for the first time and be like, wow, you know, this feels like super immersive. I want to get really good at it. I want them. I want to work out the movement mechanics. You know, I want to be the best at everything. You know, like I want to yeah. really get, I want to grind this game a lot. Um, and I got a lot of faith because Halo, like I said, Halo 5, if there wasn't heavy aim, and if there yeah, was no, if Halo Five was done right, it really could have been something special. Oh, one hundred percent, and I think that that's what the opportunity is with Infinite. So you know, it's just a, uh, it's a, it's an awesome time to be a Halo fan because we're getting close. We've got lots of announcements that announcements that keep coming out, like we're talking about the audio side of things with the land at the end of the year. Yeah, no, I'm about to start reading those because that audio thing, like I did not know that, and that actually sounds pretty fucking. Dude, I'm, cool. I'm I'm reading uh, as much of these things as I can because I really want to get my head around it. So when the game comes out. I can revisit these things and make content around it, make you some YouTube mm. videos and be like, so when you're in a game, there's actually these three different tiers of, and I can teach people about the footsteps, right? And I don't even, I don't, it's not that I found it, it's just that I can remember it from when they were talking about it earlier. So good content idea for anyone watching. <laughs> but yeah. Just trying to think about those things. So. I mean, I, I learned that from you. So, I mean, if you made a YouTube video about it, like that, it's 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 very informative because that's actually insane. Yeah, I did yeah. not know that, it's awesome. Yeah, so I think yeah, it, it'll be uh, it'll be a really good a good time to be a content creator as well when Infinite comes out. Um, and that's where like you know you're averaging 150, 200 people in your Twitch stream right now. When Infinite comes out and you've already got those numbers, man, like I'm I've got my fingers crossed that you and Frosty and all the guys that are sitting there between that you know 80 to 100 viewers right now, I've yeah. got my fingers crossed that that's going to jump up to the thousands consistently. You know, like yeah, no, I mean that's that's the goal, yeah. Yeah, I just think that. A lot of you guys um, deserve to be making money from the game, like a good amount of money from the game, 
before you even introduce a team or an org or a sponsorship or anything like that. Um, and if you, I think then it gives you more pa- leveraging power when you are having those conversations as well. Um, have you have you had much experience with orgs and people offering you things and that type of thing? Uh, um, yeah, I definitely have pretty pretty good experience so far. I mean, I don't know. It's it's kind of like I don't know. For some reason, I don't really take it all that serious. But like, I I, I feel like I should. But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely an experience i don't know <laughs> yeah how how what's the experience been like so far um there's not a whole lot i can talk about if anything but uh just, just being on orgs like for my first org right when i competed in hoa about a year ago yeah we uh we we went into this org what was it called i think it was pride yeah pride i think it was my first org and it was awesome like having like an announcement video and stuff I thought I was like, wow, this is actually pretty cool because I've never been on an actual org before. So just being on an org, I always thought it was so cool. So just like having to just get that feeling, like be on a team, I, I was, it was cool. Yeah. And what, when, when you were on that team, uh, what were the things that they kind of offer you? Like, is there a way for like younger players when they're starting to have orgs approach them to know what's good, what's bad, you know, like what they should be keeping an eye out for? Um, see, I would comment on this, but like, I feel like I'm still like young on this topic too. Like, I really don't know what I should be looking for either. I kind of just let, like, let my teammates do that stuff. Yeah. Like, I feel just, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I really can't answer that one. Yeah. I'm, no. I'm still really, like, fairly new to it too. So, yeah. That's, that's something that, um, we're trying to do in Divine Mind, right? Is we're trying to help kids get this understanding of how if they get to a point where they have a team or organizations um, offering them something how they can negotiate it and make sure that they're getting um, a, not just a solid deal but getting like a um, um, something that they can be confident in that it's not going to roll over or anything like that because Halo in Australia for example our pro players have been shafted like by orgs and yeah. we've got big orgs right I won't name anyone because I'm, I'm you know I don't want to get involved with that type of stuff uh, at this mm. level in, in our in our organization um, <laughs> growth, but you know, big organizations have just shafted Halo players in Australia, saying, saying they're going to send them gift you know gift packs and new equipment before they go over to Worlds, and then that stuff never happening, and then saying that they're not going to take take any prize money if they win, but then when they get prize money, you know, asking for some of it, it anyway. just you know, and I think that you know it's really important for people to start getting a better or really talented players as well getting a really good understanding for how they can negotiate things um and we've got one player in divine mind his name's um didact he's uh he's a streamer not not a not a professional player he's just a casual halo player and he's just building really strong community around himself and he's the first person to reach level three in like our progression system and in level three it's where we start teaching them about how to build value in their brand so that they can negotiate and they can say okay like on my social media on my instagram platform i get this many views this much this many impressions you know i've got this much of like a of power essentially that comes from this social media and they can go through and they can analyze that from lots of perspectives and they can say that means that i would say my current worth is this type of thing right mm-hmm. um, and 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 learning how that they can they let the other person they let the organization make the first offer and then negotiate back and forward from there you know using things um you know as well to make sure that they're just really milking the opportunity for the most because businesses will always come in here when the potential is here you know um Mm. so interesting though that you say that as well because you know you're one of the best players in 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 the game um yeah and you know i think that's a really (laughs) cool thing by a lot of people is 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 educating themselves on on how all of that stuff works um and and how to how to capitalize on it but um i've got a few questions i I wanted to ask you uh before we we wrap up i try to keep it around an hour and i think we've got about 15 minutes left Um, okay I wanted to know a little bit about you, like outside of the game. You know, um, h- how old are you at the moment? Uh, I just turned twenty-one recently, about a month and a half ago. Oh well, happy birthday to hey, twenty-first. That's a big one. Did you do anything exciting? Uh, nah, nah. Kind of just drunk a few beers, and that was about it. <laughs> just a chill. Especially with, like COVID and stuff. There's pretty much nothing to do, so not nah, didn't really do anything. Yeah, you're right. COVID's made it a bit tough. So okay, yeah. you're twenty-one at the moment. Did you, um, are you studying anything at the moment? Did you, did you go to? Uh, no. So I did not go to college. I, like, I, I, I kind of like school, like growing up as a kid, but 
after high school, I was just like, nah, I don't want to, I don't want to do anything like that. We would pursue anything college wise. So yeah. after school, I actually, after high school, I actually, <clears throat> actually got a job and this is what actually like, or like wanted me to do professional Halo yeah. or just professional gaming is after I got the job, I was like, okay, this sucks. Like I did not want to like have like an office job or anything like that. And like prior to that, like prior to uh getting a job and stuff like i people would always tell me like dude why do you not go to land events like mm. why do you not care i was like i don't know i just don't care to go pro or anything like that because i never had like a dry like i just played the game just played it you know yeah but after getting a job and just like having to like make money and stuff i was like nah i, I hate this like it's not fun well what so, was that first job do you remember uh is it all i've worked for my dad he has he's a company i pretty much just like helped him with whatever you need help with but it was mostly an office job i would just sit there and just just do spreadsheets and stuff like that all day and it was it was hell like i hated it so yeah after that yeah so and so that's when you went all right no I, want, I think this gaming thing is something that i want to pursue yeah 100 percent. yeah after that i i pretty much started realizing like yeah like i mean i knew people like renegade and stuff they were, they were the same age as me i think he's actually younger and like he, he just won like a hundred grand you know yeah. um, or just even probably more and I was like, all right, I can do this. Like, I'm, I'm not terrible at the game. Like, I knew I was good at the game at that time too. Like, I was just up there with them. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I can do this. Like, it's possible. Yeah. And, um, and so, do you, uh, are you, are you working at the moment? Or are you focusing? No, on no I'm currently not working. No. Ever since then, I pretty much, I pretty much just like work out and just play video games. That's pretty much it. That's awesome. What type of, what type of working out do you do? Do you uh, I'll just, I'll just do like weightlifting. I mean, not. I haven't really. Like I'll literally just like I have like a pull up bar. I'll just do like two, like before like, probably about a year ago before COVID, right? I was really into it. I would just like do like actual like weight training and stuff. Yeah. But then COVID hit, and I honestly just like stopped caring. So then I would just like I don't know. I would just I just started randomly doing pull ups and push ups like twenty four seven. And I actually have a gym too. Yeah. So I don't know why I just don't use it. I don't know. I, it doesn't make sense. But Dude. no. I, you're you're only a small flight away. I'll come and use that gym. I've been I haven't been to the gym in over a year and a half now because it's been all closed here. In yeah, California. no, it's actually a good gym. I just I don't know why I don't use it. I'm I'm an idiot. I'm just lazy. Like I just don't want to go down and use it. I'll just sit here and just do push ups in my room or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least you're getting something done. I mean, push ups and pull ups are a pretty good. Uh, that's chest and back right there. You know? Yeah, good yeah, time. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, that's awesome. I'll just I'll do some setups too. Now, I, I'll, pretty much the only thing I'll do with the gym is just squat. That's about it. Yeah, fair enough. You know, well, that's it. Hey, then you've got your full body done. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't know how good it really is, but yeah, it's pretty much that's pretty much all I do. I, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. We well, should talk to Booby. I'm pretty sure I saw Booby Dooby put out a post uh, maybe a while ago of him doing some running, and he was hooning. Oh yeah, no, he's he's huge into running. I I mean, sometimes I'll go on a run. I can't lie. I'll I'll just like. Go on a run outside if it's like a super nice day out because like why not you know it's a nice day out yeah what, what do you think of this idea i've been really toying with this idea of um i, I don't know if the viewers remember we talked about it briefly we did a one thousand dollar charity cup that you played in um mm -hmm. and uh that was to to raise money for a whole heap of different um charities that were super deserving of it we're thinking about thinking about doing another similar charity event but getting gamers to um teams together so probably mm. like, a, like a 2v2 comp but you're not actually playing halo it's just a it's a movement goal so like let's say that you and booby dooby want a team um your total kilometers that you um move like run and track through strava or something is your points and so every team's trying to walk further run further whatever whatever we said oh no we would 100 win that <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm actually i'm pretty like i'm like a i might think i'm pretty fast i don't know in yeah. high school, I, I could run like a decent fast mile. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't run like a 40 anything, but no, I think me and Jesse would win that. Because yeah. he's a huge runner, so. Yeah. Hey, well, look, I'm going to I'm gonna work on that idea a little bit more. And then I might, need, help. I'm doing I might, I might need your help pulling a few people into it. But uh, I think it would be a really good charity event. And that, you know, that's something that I think is super important for these younger gamers as well. Yeah, no, yeah, 100%. Like recently, I mean, not recently, I'd say about a year and a half, I really started like, probably the last two years, I definitely started focusing more on my health. Because like, as a kid, like I would just sit here and play the game all day. Like I would literally not even eat sometimes. Yeah. Like that's one thing in my mind that going into infinite, I definitely like have strived to like put more attention to just more my health than anything. Yeah, yeah. 
Do you know what I think? It is important, especially with gaming and stuff like that. Dude, I think um, we'll talk about this a little bit when we finish, but um, we have a, a sponsor for Divine Mind called PH360. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to send you a link for their stuff and uh, I'll talk to you a little bit more after it, but just to give them a quick plug in the podcast today, do uh, they're called PH360 because it's having a 360 uh, degree view on your health. So they talk about things like your mind, your um, space, so like the stuff that's around you, the food, the exercise, um, absolutely like every element of your health. And mm -hmm. um, they've got this online um, like tool that takes in all of like your body measurements and um, like traits from like, uh, it's called a genotype. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lot of detailed stuff, but essentially it lets them really come down, put you into like a, um, a, a genotype uh, of person that should help you to, if you make little tiny changes, like let's say, for example, uh, you know that you're going to be sleeping, going to sleep late, right? They'll teach you how you can eat and design your room and get natural lights and do things that mean that you, that effect won't, won't be as negative on you. And then you can add like other things. It's, it's super cool. We'll talk about it a little bit off stream, but that's the type of stuff that I really want more and more gamers to kind of have access to because then it's not like trying to figure out where to start and what to do it's just like hey here's this really cool you know um list of things that i can do that's automatically going to make me a, a better gamer yeah um because i think there's a, a big disconnect between like a pro gamer and a pro athlete and i really don't think there should be because some pro gamers are making as much if not more than pro athletes mm -hmm. and they're just as big too yeah, and they've got just as big a following, and and the the effect that a, um, a a role model in the esports community could have on so many kids, if it was a positive one, um, is huge. I think, and I think at the moment, unfortunately, the majority of gamers have uh, negative, um, not 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 intentionally, and it's not from being toxic or anything like that. It's just that their behavior on stream and that type of things is just sitting and grinding a game for so long and never really talking about the health stuff that they ha would have to be doing. You know, yeah. I don't, see, I don't I mean, know. They're, they're young too. Like, it's not like when you're younger, you're not everything about your health. Cause you know, you're always told you're so young. You don't really need to think about it. So you just, you don't ever think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, and that's the message that needs to change is like, they're literally putting themselves like 10 years. You know, I don't know if you've seen Ninja uh, recently, but man, that guy looks like he's sick at the moment. You yeah, know? no, he like, does. Yeah. He does look terrible. Yeah. And I've been like looking at him like, man, someone needs to, there needs to be an intervention there. Someone needs to take, like say, I know you're making lots of money, uh, but you need to take a break and just like get yourself in, in check. Because uh, right now there's kids looking up to you thinking, I want to be like that guy. You yeah. Know? Um, but that's, that's, that's completely another story. So back to, back to more about you in real life. So you, you're working out and stuff as well. Do you have a missus or any girls are chasing at the moment? No, nah, no, nah, nothing like that. No, nah. not, not for right now. No, in the future, probably, but I'm literally, I'm just focused on infinite and just, to being the best player I can be. Yeah. What's what's the dream girls? And is it a, an e girl that you'd like, or are you more like <laughs> play games? Uh, I definitely one I feel like doesn't play games. I don't know. I feel like I don't know. I, I just would want one that's like has their own passion. Yeah. I, for some reason, I feel like I don't know. I always thought that was a weird as a kid. Like, cause I had this friend who had like his parents are the same. Like, they both work together. Yeah. I was like, that seems weird. And even my aunt and uncle were, were like work together. I just, I don't know, I always thought that was weird. I just, I couldn't imagine me doing that. So, I don't know if, if they were into gaming, like, I mean, it's possible, but not. If it was a preference, it probably wouldn't have yeah. to be a gamer. No. I, yeah, I think what you said initially is like so on point is they need to have their own passions, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think that's one of the most attractive things um, that, that I find attractive in, in people. In yeah, no, people who just like aren't passionate about anything are kind of just, they're just like, they're kind of just like, what do you do then like what do you care about like i don't know I, I i know a lot of unpassionate people and it's just like they seem kind of bland i don't know and that's it they are man they're, they're like the normies you know? yeah like, yeah <laughs> they're, they're just they're like the most average self and it's like okay whatever yeah, I, I have this like little um analogy that i like using it's like they're like the npcs right yeah they're literally no, they're pretty much not even real people at that point like how do you just live your life not caring about anything yeah. or have like a drive to do something yeah they're, they're the people that like you know you're a main character i'm a main character we walk in 
and, and we, we click A on the counter to talk to someone and, and they're the NPC behind there. Yeah, literally, yeah. Makes us food and brings it back and then our energy stopped up and we go off to, you know, beat another yeah. level. So <laughs> I, think, uh, I really like that analogy though. So, um, mm. all right, cool. And uh, so coming into Infinite, how, how are you going to prepare? Like, what, what's the plan when Infinite drops? Are you going to just get straight into trying to find, you know, ways to um, set a meta for the game? Are you going to play a campaign? Like, what's the plan? Um, honestly, I haven't even thought about that. I'm more just like, I don't know. I feel like I just have to, like, see what the game looks like first. I don't even know. Honestly, I have no idea, like, thinking about that question. I feel like... I don't know. I feel like I'm just going to grind the game and just whatever happens, happens. Kind of like we're just Halo 5. Yeah. I mean, I honestly know like what to look for now, like as a player, opposed to like five, six years ago. What but, are the things that you're going to be looking for? Uh, Like spawn, stuff like that. Just like, just how the game like truly, truly works. Because back then I would just, <clears throat> I would just play and like whatever happens, happens. Right. So like playing now, I need to like actually see how stuff is influenced in the game, how the weapons work shooting movement and stuff because when halo 5 first came out i was not a movement guy at all like i did i walked around i would just run around right but like there's uh, pretty much when shotzi came along and like changed the meta with the movement like that's definitely something i'll be looking forward to in infinite yeah. just like just seeing how like if movement is actually viable and stuff so yeah i guess i i guess coming into infinite i probably will just try to try to change the meta or something like that or just like establish one yeah yeah. I don't, I'll probably play the campaign too. I like the Halo campaigns a lot. Yeah, same. I, I, do, I mean, I haven't even finished the Halo 5 one, so I hope it's a little bit oh, The Halo 5 one's kind of meh. That's definitely oh. the worst one. Yeah, yeah. No, that's really cool. I'm super excited to see what you're doing uh, and what, what you can achieve in Halo Infinite. You know, I think. Yeah, yeah especially with the grapple hook and stuff. I mean, we probably won't play with that competitively unless it's like something actually like useful, but uh, with the grapple hook and the campaign and stuff, I think it'll be super cool. I'm curious yeah. how it works. Yeah. Yeah, I th I'm looking forward to seeing how all that stuff fits in. Um, it'd be really fantastic, <laughs> you know. I think it gives another another edge, and if it's implemented really well, it could add that other dimension. That yeah, no, that's what I'm curious to see. Like, if it's actually useful, because like everyone already plays it, downplays it. Like, oh, we're not going to use that a gravel hook. Like, yeah. you know, what if it's actually useful though? You know, yeah. like people were saying the same stuff about Halo Five. Yeah. Or with well, Rust. I mean, I don't, I don't know what there's. I assume people were kind of like not a, a happy with the idea. Yeah. I mean, if it's cool and it's like useful and actually can do something for the game, then why not? You know? Have you have you read? There's there's some cool stuff. They talk about like you could literally grab a flag with it. Um, oh yeah, no, I saw that. You can like grab a flag. Weapons. Weapons. Like, Pretty sure. I, don't, I think you pick up dead bodies. Maybe I don't yeah, know. Maybe imagine chucking a dead body. That's like, yeah, like imagine yeah. you pick up someone's dead body after you kill them. Like that would be <laughs> that would make me so mad. I'm like. Dude, he's picking up my fucking body. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude, exactly. Throw my body at you, like, dude. That'd be so. Yeah. I feel like that won't be a thing, but if it is, that'd be pretty funny and cool. Yeah, dude, I'd love to. I'd love that to be the new tea bag. Is uh, yeah, you just pick up their body, throw it at their teammate, or off the map. Throw it off the map or something. Just like or throw it in the sky and you like shoot it or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I'm looking forward to that. We're we're, we're establishing a meta right now, but it's a toxic. yeah, hundred. No, that's what I'm doing now. Like game starts, I'm going in custom games, picking up the grapple. Hook. <laughs> can I, can I, can I the grapple yeah. Hook? Yeah. Actually, I'm curious to see if the grapple could be like a weapon or like it's just like a, like a thruster, like it's just a mechanic, right? I feel like it's definitely just going to be a mechanic, but yeah. it could be a weapon too. I don't know. We'll see. Well, I know I know that they've talked about the grapple being able to um, to pull an enemy towards you as well. So it'll be interesting to see that what? if you, like yeah, so like it'll be interesting to see if you're pulling an enemy towards you if they can still fire their gun or if it kind of like disables them because if they can still fire their gun they're going to just shoot you and beat you down it's just another way of trading a beat down right yeah but if grapple hook grabs someone maybe in the back and they're not facing you and you can like literally pull them and i don't know so it could be a cool weapon to use like that as well but yeah no i'm curious if it'll be like i don't know actually now, I'm, now, now you got me thinking i don't know that's what i do that's what i do <laughs> I spend lots of time thinking about this because, you know, um, I, I'm a huge fan of Remy's of Mint Blitz. And, um, oh, yeah, no, Mint Blitz is awesome. And yeah, that guy, he's uh, he's just, he found a niche in, in a perfect timing. He's been grinding the game for so long. No, dude, that guy will do, dude, I'll be on Twitter and like this guy will like fly up in the air, 360 no scope, like six grunts, and then like fall down and like assassinate in the lead. Absolutely. But he's like a thousand feet in the sky. Yeah. Like, bro, how long did that even take you? 
it's I, well, I've I've seen uh, in his Discord and everything he talks about it taking like twelve to fifteen hours, and he does it. Yeah, like, like, you know, I would not have the patience for that. No, nah, like twelve thousand attempts to do things like like fly across the map, uh, the map, and 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 stick a banshee and stuff. Like he's insane, right? But yeah. he gets me thinking. So I, I'm, I'm putting together all these ideas for Infinite, right? So I can give to content creators and stuff. But like, guys, you should really create some kind of content around. Can this be done? You know, like yeah. They, no, no, Mimblitz is growing like tremendously from that stuff. Like those, it'll be like a 30 to a minute clip, right? Of him just doing the craziest shit and say. So, oh, he's, he's about to hit 100k on YouTube. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, nah, I follow him on Twitter. I'm actually I'm somewhat cool with him. I've never talked to him, but I, I would play with him and. Uh, like it, when Reach was first coming out on uh, MCC, yeah, so I pretty much I, I'm, I'm somewhat. Cool. I've never talked to the guy, but he seems awesome. But you know, his clips, I, I think some of them like on ESPN and stuff. Like, dude, yeah. I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, how do you even like? Man, I don't know. His clips are insane. I love him though. I know. Yeah. Cool. It, it, that type of stuff gets me thinking and gets again gets me excited for Infinite because no, yeah, like, no, he's gonna have the craziest Infinite clips probably. Yeah. Well, I think I think everyone has a potential. You know, like it brings it's gonna it evens the playing field and it gives people like you that have a really good following already uh, mm. opportunity to kind of stand out but we're gonna we're gonna start to wrap it up now because uh yeah i like to keep it around an hour it's been awesome talking to you mm. um a few questions that i like to ask when we finish up is if you could think of yourself five years from now so probably halfway through that infinite life cycle um what's the like dream reality look like for you are you a world champion by then are you have you found your e-girl are you exercising <laughs> more what what's like the dream for five years from now for you um i guess i would just be to see like halo big again like it honestly wouldn't even be like anything like personal or just to see like halo super big again and thriving awesome and, and seeing uh, it big i mean i would like obviously like you know be a champion and stuff but I feel like just seeing the game as big as it can be and just like Halo just on top again, you know? Yeah, yeah. That'd just be like the coolest thing to me. Do you think that uh, there's a, you got a good shot at that take, t- taking a world championship? Oh, 100%. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, I, that's a hundred percent. Like, I mean, I honestly expect to be one, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what some people have to say about that. I love, I love that you just said it's actually what I expect to be. Yeah. Cause you know, I, I don't put this much time in it to just not you know just be the best at i putting this much time in it like that's like the expectation for me so yeah amazing man i'm gonna i'm literally clipping that part of this uh of this podcast i'm gonna show it to you again uh <laughs> when you are world champion i want to be like <laughs> no, that, that happens that'll be surreal that'll be crazy yeah dude. And, and i mean if anyone can do it you've got the talent you've got the people around you uh yeah. so yeah no but and, and you got you got lots of support you know i'm I, yeah. i'm gonna be cheering you on as well so um i'm looking forward to seeing it um the the last question that i like to ask as well is uh, to throw everybody kind of under the bus a little bit is um if they who they think would add value to the conversation you know if there's a player that you play with that you think really would um you know uh come on the podcast and have a story to tell that not many people know about i think lots of people are going to learn a lot about you from this podcast which was the, the plan um and get to know you a little bit more because you know for a lot of people you're still this kind of you know enigma in the space yeah um but there's a lot more in this in this um interview that i think people will grow from so uh who, who do you think someone that um we should get on the podcast that would add some value to the conversation uh and that you think uh, has a really good story to tell um uh, i don't know that's a good one um i feel like i, I know everyone's story i don't know i feel like if i if i was in this position i would say myself so like I'm kind of like I don't know um maybe legend like I said earlier legend I'm just curious like where like where that guy came from I guess okay. I'm curious like oh that guy's because he's young right he's like 15 16 I'd probably say if it was legend I definitely would watch a legend podcast there you go man all right legend I'm gonna reach out to you we're gonna do an episode of the podcast it's gonna be uh really interesting I, lo- I love how these things kind of bounce around you know um yeah. we've we've had some amazing people on the podcast some that are working in esports some that are organizing the tournaments you know some that are streamers yourself as a professional player so it'd be really exciting to get another one of the- we had uh uh, Shirzy from Europa Halo. So we'll go back over to Europe um, mm-hmm. for, for the next episode. And we'll try and get Legend on and, and uh, get a little bit of his background for you just so you can have a little bit more of an advantage next time you face him up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I'm actually probably going to play against him tomorrow in a 2v2 tournament. So. Uh, 
out there, yeah. Well, I'll be watching if it streams. Um, I appreciate you so much for taking the time in to, to come onto the podcast and chat with us mm-hmm. for so long. Uh, I hope everyone really watching got a lot out of it as well. Is there anything that you want to add before we finish up? Um, no, nah, I mean, I appreciate the interview. It was awesome. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Awesome. All right, guys, thank you so much for being this far into the podcast. I really do appreciate the fact that you stuck around, you had a listen. Hopefully you enjoyed and learned a lot about Bound. Um, I know that I did. Uh, I always find it really interesting to get to know the players a little bit more and uh, build that connection because when you're watching them stream, watching them play, now I'm going to be wanting to cheer Bound on even more than I already do, and I hopefully you guys will feel the same. Uh, make sure that you check out the description to this video if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening to it on Anchor or Spotify or wherever you get your, your podcasts from, check the description because all of Bound links will be in there uh, i think he's only got two videos in his youtube channel at the moment but i'm sure that's yeah not, not a whole lot not a whole lot <laughs> it will change it will change an infinite it will change an infinite there you go so make sure you sub on youtube make sure you're joining him on twitter uh and twitch where i think he's the most active um and yeah, definitely towards follow- definitely towards yeah yeah and following the journey so thanks so much uh, for your time again mate uh, i hope everyone enjoyed make sure you leave a comment and a like let me know if there's any questions that we missed out on your feedback is very important and uh, genuinely take it on board to make sure the podcast is improving every single episode uh, and i'll see you guys on the next podcast